Hey crafters, welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. My name is Sophia from Stampin' with Sophia and today I'm going to be making a birthday card for you using Lawn Fawn's Veggie Happy stamp set and dies. I'm also going to include the um, stitched root vegetables and the harvest crate which is also from Lawn Fawn. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by stamping the images that I'm going to be using in my card. Um, I love to use all of my white paper and so I split it into two pieces. Um, I'm just laying down my stamps first and then I'm inking them up with some Memento Black Tuxedo ink and stamping those and making sure I get a really nice crisp image. Um, now I'm going to start to color them. So I'm adding shade to the back side of all of these critters. So for these ones here, I'm starting on the left side with my E43. And for the one facing the other way, that's going to go, the shading is going to go on the right side. Uh, my mid-tone is going to be E42 and I'm just going to blend that uh, darker color outwards on all of those mice. Um, and then the final color I'm going to use, the lightest color, is E41. Now if you have E40, you could also use that, but I at this point do not have E40 yet, and so my lightest color ended up being E40. So after I have those critters colored in, I'm going to use my R20 Copic marker to do the insides of the ears. And I'm also adding a little bit of blush to the, on the cheeks of all of those mice. Even the one that I think is a boy, which is the one on the left side of the screen there. So next I'm going to color that little tomato tree. I started with R35, which is my darker red, and then blending out with the R22. Um, for my leaves on that tree, I decided to go with G02 and G00, starting with the G02 at the bottom. Um, for the tops of my tomatoes, I'm using YG67, just because that other green did not match at all. And then I came back in with G19 at the bottom of those green leaves because I just felt like there wasn't enough contrast there. So I added a little bit of a darker tone near the ends. And then using those same three colors, G19, G02, and G00 for the tops of those root vegetables. Um, for the clothes, I decided to go with blue, green, and yellow to match the patterned paper, which you can kind of see on the corner of the screen, but I haven't really brought it in yet. So the first mouse there is going to have um, some blue, and I think I used B06, B04, and B00. For the green colored mouse, I used the same colors that I used for the leaves, the G19, G02 and G00 and then same for the hat so I made the belt a little bit darker looking and then I also forgot to do the back side of that critter and so I filled that in um, I'm bringing in yellow for the last mouse there and I believe I'm using Y13 and Y11 for that little pocket on the mouse I decided to bring in the blue and I also used it for the flower in the in the girl mouse's hat. So this is my turnip. I felt like it was a little bit too dark, um, but it at the end it ended up working. So I used V09 there um, and V04 and V02. For the sticks, I'm bringing in E44 just to make them a little bit darker. Um, and then again, the E43, the E41 and yeah, the E41 was the lightest. For my shovel, I brought in N2 and N0, and then I decided that I wanted N4 in there as well, just to give it a little bit more contrast. In the end, I didn't end up really using that shovel, but it's best to just have more pieces than I think than you think you're gonna need. So I ended up making this into the top of a carrot and then my turnip and now I'm just going to use my dies and cut all of that out. For the root vegetables, I've went ahead and picked out some colors. So I've got green for all the tops, um, uh, that mango color for my carrot, 
uh, for um, the turnips I used vanilla and then I'm just gonna use some purple to blend in some color and for my harvest crate I used a crumb cake color so I'm just gonna cut those all out as well now I'm gonna use my blending brushes just to add some color into that so it doesn't look so flat I'm um, just adding some shading with my tiniest blending brush there and I love how that turned out because it's a little bit darker at the bottom but nice and light at the top really brings it some dimension there. Um, for my carrot I used some orange ink there. Um, I can't carved pumpkin yes so I'm using carved pumpkin and again I'm just adding it where there is stitching and more near the bottom just to give again uh, dimension and then here come my turnips and I wanted to use a smaller blending brush for this but I didn't have one so I had to use a bigger one and I just tried to go in with it where the stitching was but I also wanted to leave some white there so I kind of left some white in the middle of the turnip on this one I pulled out instead of pushing in and so that one looked, I feel like the bigger one looked a little bit better. And then I'm just adding some darker color near the bottom. So there's my vegetables. For the crate, I'm using some ground espresso on the um, panels that are gonna get glued to the front of the crate just to make it look a little bit darker and a little bit of a different color because wood doesn't always look the same color and so I thought it'd be fun to add some uh, darker color to that crumb cake color and at the at beginning I just did the ends but um, I did end up going in and doing the middles of those crates too because I just thought it looked better if all of uh, all of the panel was one color versus being light in the middle and so here's everything that I need to assemble my card now I'm going to use this as the background piece um, I was going to cut out a face from that carrot but I decided not to and then I use that stitch rectangle to cut out a white panel and that's what we're going to do the background on before I get there, I'm just going to go ahead and put my crate together and let that dry while I am assembling the background of my card. So just make sure all of those pieces are lined up or else the crate's going to look a little wonky. So for my background, I'm using the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil and I'm just going to use some Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink to blend uh, the sky there and I'm going to rotate my stencil so I get lots of different shapes of clouds in the sky I wanted to keep it a little bit light in the corner but it ended up being dark and that's okay but that's where my greeting is going to go so I did about three rows of those clouds and then um, I just took my blue um, blending brush and fix the corner there so that it all kind of looks uh, blended together well. For my grass I just flipped it over and added the grass stencil, the slimline grass stencil, and used some mowed lawn distress oxide ink to create the ground that's going to be in my card. And near the bottom I did try to go a little bit darker with that ink just so it looks um, like it has two different colors in it. So now I'm just assembling my root vegetables and I put the tops of the uh, vegetables in like the green area and then just glued them on in the back. I found that was easier to do than putting glue on it first and then putting it on. Um, yeah, so there's my vegetables. Now I'm just stamping my greeting and it says I totally dig you and I love that because all of the mice there are like digging and cleaning and gardening and I love that. So I just put all of my stitched vegetables into the crate and I made sure that they covered um, all of the little spaces there. If you don't like if it if it's uh, if if I made them stick out more it was looking really weird so I just made sure that all of the crate was filled out and now I'm just um, deciding how I want to lay out uh, all the rest of the pieces on there so I didn't think about this before I kind of just did it on camera and so you're gonna see me um, arranging them in different ways and 
coming up with how I want them to look. So that sign, I kind of just put it slanted and then I realized that mouse was covering the sign. And so I put him a little bit lower. And on the sign I stamped, you grow girl, but um, it didn't fit really well. So I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's still really cool because it's going to be a nice birthday card. So I, I thought that that layout looked good. And so I'm just going to glue everything else down here. I like the two little um, mice that are gardening. It's like they're gardening together and socializing and that little carrot is growing, but they have these giant carrots in their crate. Um, my tomato tree is kind of going to be in the background, a nice little background piece. And then my last mouse will go there. And then I did have that little, um, uh, turnip and so I'm just going to put that on as well. I tried to include the shovel into the into the picture but I didn't it was it just looked like it was a little much and so I'm going to use the shovel for the inside of the card um, so I'm just going to put that turnip down because I thought that looked really good and then this is going to get glued down onto that card base there so now I'm just going to grab my card base and start gluing everything down so I'm going to take my uh, patterned panel there and put some glue on there and anytime I want to use my glue it's like it doesn't work but finally it came out and it came out in a lot so I had to move quickly and kind of get that on there and then close it before it just oozed out everywhere and now I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down onto my card base line it up properly I love that about the liquid glue um, if I would have used taped run tape runner, it always, um, you can't move it once you stick it down. So it's nice to have liquid glue when you're gluing down your panel. And then for my, um, stitched, uh, panel there, I'm going to use liquid glue as well. And I'm just going to put a little bit all over that as well, making sure to get all of the corners and then align that and put it right in the center. I debated putting it on foam foam tape, but I thought it looked best with, uh, with just uh, regular glue. So that is my card, guys. There's one last thing I'm gonna do on there. I'm just gonna grab some of that blue ink and instead of putting like rhinestones or something, I just decided to do a little bit of splatter on that sky. And so I'm just getting my paintbrush wet and I used a little scrap piece of paper to cover up the rest of the scene. And then I'm just gonna tap my paintbrush onto the blue area of the card to give that sky a little bit of splatter and texture because I thought it was just looking a little bit plain but then I was happy with how it turned out after that. Like, doesn't it look just so much better? I think it does. So yeah, I'm just gonna put the shovel on the inside. I'll probably use a strip of that designer paper and then put the shovel on top. So that is my card for you today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, consider checking out these videos up here from our other designers. They are fabulous. Um, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye.